This lesson is about how fonts are constructed. To be able to display fonts where you want them in a Java window, you'll need to know how fonts are measured and sized. Now, while it's true that text is the thing that's displayed most often, and lots of displayable fonts are available in Java, it's one of the most difficult things to position on the screen until you understand how it's measured. Once you can measure it, you can position it. Now, the letters of Java rest on a baseline that runs along underneath the bottom of every letter. Well, as you can see in this example, it runs along the bottom of almost every letter. Some letters have descenders that extend below the baseline. Now, the distance from this baseline to the bottom of the lowest extending letter in the entire font is known as the descent of the font. Not all letters have descenders, of course, but you need to allow for the ones that do when you're positioning a line of text. Just like some letters have descenders, some others have ascenders. The ascent value is the distance from the top of the tallest letter in the font to the baseline. Now, some characters have very short ascenders, and most have no descenders. Some have very short ascenders and descenders. For example, a comma has a very short ascender, and while it has a descender, it's quite small. Notice now that the sum of the ascent and descent is the height of the visible portion of the tallest possible character in the font. Also notice that the height of the characters vary from one to the other and that the baseline is almost never in the center of text or even in the center of a single character. This fact becomes important when you are trying to position text vertically. Every character has a width, which includes the white space necessary to separate it from the characters to its left and right. Some fonts have the space on the left, some on the right, some on both sides. Exactly how this is done is entirely up to the designer of the font. In most modern fonts, the width of the characters vary. It doesn't show up very well in this example, but the width can vary quite a bit. For example, the letter W is much wider than the letter I. A few fonts have all the characters take up the same width. These are known as fixed fonts or fixed width fonts. Anyway, the variable width characteristic of fonts means that the graphic length of a string of characters cannot be determined by multiplying some width value by the number of characters in the string. The space between the lines of characters is called the leading. The name comes from the old practice of placing thin strips of lead between lines of type when setting the type by hand. The value of the height of a font is measured from the top of the tallest ascender to the bottom of the leading. Once you determine the height, you can display multiple lines of text one below the other by adjusting the vertical position by the value of the height of the font. Now, here's an important point for positioning text. Whenever your code specifies the location of a character, it specifies the location of the baseline immediately to the left of the character. In displaying a line of text, the position of the first character on the line is specified. The position is always at the leftmost end of the string of characters and on the baseline. In the next three lessons, we are going to look at the techniques of creating fonts and determining the measurements so we can display them where we want them in a window.